Hey everyone, Grand K for the Flame Learning Channel. Welcome to part 6 of the Particles 101 Fundamentals video series. In part 5, we started looking at the influencing factors that can alter how particles react in the 3D environment. This included the Particle Bouncer, which allows you to deflect particles or bounce them off a variety of objects. In this video, we introduce another influencing functionality when it comes to particles. These are called Particle Manipulators or Particle Animators. Now there is a whole range of them to choose from. But we're going to focus on a very popular one that everyone needs. So today, we're going to focus on gravity. If you would like to follow along, please click the link in the YouTube description to download the media. Alternatively, if you're watching the podcast video, then type the link displayed in your web browser. Now go ahead and load the batch setup through the load menu. Double click on the action node for its controls and press ALT 2 for a 2 up view. In this action setup, I've already provided you with a particle stream and there is also a surface which we'll use to bounce the particles. In the previous video, you used particle bouncers to deflect particles in a particular direction. This almost gave the appearance of gravity in the 3D composite. In this video, we'll actually apply gravity to the particles and see how the different settings can control the particles behaviour. So to apply a manipulator to a particle system, select the particle generator in the action schematic. Go to the action node bin menu and look in the bin and find the particle animator node. When you drag out the manipulator, it should attach to the particle generator. This ensures that the manipulator will affect the current particle stream. Double click the particle animator for its controls. Now a manipulator contains multiple behaviours for a particle system and you can only apply one behaviour per node. So if you wanted to apply multiple behaviours to the particles, just add more particle animator nodes. In order to choose the gravity manipulator, you click the type pull down menu. There are 8 manipulator behaviours to choose from and we'll look at different ones in future videos. Choose the gravity manipulator type and the default gravity settings are applied to the particles. If you scrub through the composite at this point, gravity does not appear to be doing anything. This is because the initial direction of gravity is pointing in the same direction as the emitter. In other words, gravity is pointing to the right because it's following the orientation of the light at the top of the particle flow graph. So similar to bouncers, you can unlock or free the gravity axis to point it in any direction you choose. In the manipulator menu, enable the free transformations. You should now see that the gravity axis has moved to the center of the frame. If you rotate the gravity axis to 90 degrees on the X axis, you will point the arrow downwards and that is now the gravity direction. You can see how the particles are now moving downwards in the composite. So by rotating the gravity axis, you can apply gravity in any direction within your composite. Now to make this clear, switch over to the working camera view with space F4. This will allow you to move around the 3D composite independent of the main camera. I also suggest selecting the camera and hiding it with the H keyboard shortcut. This will hide the camera's frustrum in the working camera view. Holding O for orbit, you can orbit around the particle system. The next step in the workflow is once you've established the direction of the gravitational force, you then decide how the particles will be influenced by gravity. You have two choices, position and speed. The position option pushes the particles in the direction of the gravitational forces, but it does not alter the particle speed. So for example, you have magnitude, which is the amount of influence the manipulator has on the particles. 
If you set it to zero, the manipulator does nothing to the particles. But as you increase the magnitude using the position influence, the particles are being dragged downwards in a specific direction. As an extra tip, the scale transformations also increase the influence of the manipulator if you prefer to use this slider instead. To help illustrate that the position influence is not changing the speed of the particles, switch to the particle generator controls. The speed is set to a constant of 10, so all these particles move at the same speed. When you increase the variance, the slower particles are pulled down by gravity, but with their own speed. This can be handy for creating cascading particle effects. Set the speed variance back to zero and switch back to the particle animator controls. So remember, the position influence in a gravity particle manipulator only pulls the particles with the gravitational force but does not change their speed. The second means of influencing particles with the gravitational force is the speed option. As before, setting the magnitude or influence of the force to zero applies no gravity to the particle system. But as you increase the magnitude of the gravitational force, you get a more natural looking application of gravity on the particles. This is because the particles are being pulled down as before, but this time the influence of gravity is affecting the speed of the particles. If you orbit the working camera, you will see a more natural flowing arc to the particle flow. If you go back to the particle generator again and set the speed variance to 2, you will get a much more natural behaviour with particles using different speeds. Switch back to the particle manipulator controls. So I would suggest that if you want a more predictable and natural behaviour when it comes to gravity, go with the speed influence over position. Now it's easy to combine particle bouncers and particle manipulators for different results. Select the particle bouncer in the action schematic and unhide it to re-enable the surface as a particle bouncer. Orbit the camera to a good position and scrub the time bar. So this is all looking pretty good so far, but there is still much more that you can tweak with the gravity manipulator. This doesn't include the power slider under magnitude. In the case of other manipulators, the power slider acts as a falloff for the amount of influence. But since there is no real falloff when it comes to gravitational forces, the slider does nothing when the manipulator is set to gravity. In the upcoming video, we'll pick up from this point and discuss particle dampening and friction that will also affect the speed of the particles based on the manipulator. I hope you're enjoying the Particle 101 series and more videos to be added in the future. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Flame Learning channel for future videos.